What's up, everybody? On this episode of the podcast, we are going to be the guests on We Have Read or We've Read the Documents with our good friend, John Brisson. Rosie, how you doing, man? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. Busy, crazy week. But uh, yeah, man, uh, this is a fun, this is a fun uh, episode where we're going to be, you know, so we should give people backstory a little bit. Okay. John, he does these, we've read the documents, just dudes talking, I think is what he titles it. And he has some kind of loose topic and it, we just kind of go on YouTube live and it live streams. And so we take that live stream and we use that as our podcast episode because it's usually, I mean, this one's like an hour and a half long. So uh, we cover a myriad of topics on this. It's kind of fun. It starts off uh, with Kyle Odom and Scientology a little bit, and then we jump into New Age and and a little bit about Christian theology and some other stuff. So and a lot of grace. A lot of grace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a good episode. I like John. He's a great guy. If you can check out, uh, uh, we've read the documents. Their YouTube channel. There's a lot of great stuff on there, and I highly recommend our listeners to check them out. And yeah, and, uh, he, he will learn you on yes. stuff that you have never heard about. Yeah, he's a fantastic researcher. But yes. Anyways, what do you know, man? Hey, did you know um, that there is a serial killer in the world? In the world. I'm just kidding. No, wait, there's what? more to it. Uh, so <laughs> like, wait, what? In the in the Exorcist movie, yeah, there is a scene where Reagan is in the, uh, which is the girl that gets possessed. Okay. In the Blair, she's in the hospital. Yeah. And there's a nurse that's in a in a scene, and he's like doing some stuff in the thing, and he's kind of in the background. Yeah. He's a nurse doing some vital some thing. That was actually. The nurse that was played is a, was a real nurse who was a serial killer in the middle of his killing spree. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. And the reason he got in it was because the um, director was, like, going to hospitals. to. He wanted to be really realistic about the type of procedure. I forget what it was. Yeah. So he went to this local hospital and asked if he could watch this nurse guy doing the thing. And he was like, hey, you're really good. Can you just do this? You want to be in a movie? Can you just do this for the movie? Like, oh, pretend it? Jeez. And he was like, yeah. So, by the way, the movie's The Exorcist. Yeah. and uh, Perfect. So, yeah, if you look up, uh, his name's Paul Bateson. So he was in the middle of a... Of a he was, and you know what? Where yeah. was that? Was that filmed in uh, California, L.A. area? Probably. Do you know? I don't remember. I know that the storyline happens in Georgetown area, D.C. Yes, it was. Like Maryland area, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, did you know? Uh, how about I'll give you another movie one? Okay. Did you know the rapper Coolio was supposed to play Scarecrow <laughs> in a uh, Batman and Robin <laughs> sequel? <laughs> that would have been awesome. Yeah, was it? Coolio. I love that guy. Did he, was he the one that, was he the guy that did the Pimp My Ride? <laughs> no, that was Exhibit. Oh, Exhibit. That's right. Yeah. You don't know your, your 90s rappers? I don't. I'm, I'm, Coolio is Gangster's Paradise. That's Gangsta's Gangsta's Paradise. Gangsta's Paradise. So, Coolio. I wonder if he still has those crazy dread things. He does. I saw. Really? Uh, I remember. Before. He's got to be getting older, man. He does. He looks homeless. <laughs> <laughs> what if he started losing his hair and he still had like these min it, mini dreads or something? Basically. Oh, really? I, yeah. That's so funny, I, dude. I, someone sent me. Uh, it was on TMZ. I remember. I just. I remember seeing it recently, uh, yeah. like within the last couple months. <laughs> um <laughs> And someone was like, yo, Coolio still got the, Coolio. The, the thing. And he was like, ride the bus. And they're like, hey, aren't no, you Coolio? Yeah. Riding the bus? <laughs> yeah. Didn't he make millions? Yeah. Wow. Spinning on it's, drugs and stuff. I have no idea. Shoes. I would never imply that about any person. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You should be. Coolio, I'm sorry. You just, you just, you just... Just live in your How life. How about we'll just wrap this? Hey, let's this. go. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to get with John, and we've we've read the document so uh sit back grab a coffee and enjoy you're listening to the all out war podcast all right hope everybody's doing well this Sunday. Welcome to Dudes Talking episode number 38, uh, Christianity for the New Age with good friends of the show and brothers in Christ, Rosie and Turner from the All Out War uh, podcast. 
which I am a faithful listener to. And I do think that they both do excellent work when it you know comes to exposing many different parts of new age or secret societies or or just you know discuss you know dis- discussions uh, that are, are relative uh to, for christians uh today and um i cannot thank them enough for both of them coming on for me this this evening for us to discuss uh many different topics um through a christian lens how are y'all doing uh this afternoon well actually this evening everybody Hey, <laughs> what's, what's up, up man? <laughs> We're so happy to be on yeah, the show, de- man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely glad to have y'all both here. Um, I've been listening to um, Pastor Termer, some of your old sermons that you've been putting up, man, and I cannot thank you enough for that with your series on James and everything. It was very interesting, I, uh, James being one of my favorite books of the New Testament um pistol james and um everything and and you know both listening to all out war as well um over the you know past uh few months um of course in the more, more recent episodes you guys doing ex uh reading the manifesto of Kyle Odom or are doing your expose <laughs> on jack parsons and yeah. talking about l ron hubbard <laughs> and uh oh boy a lot of people don't understand uh, the uh, mysticism that surrounds uh, the life of L. Ron Hubbard and, and, and Jack Parsons and how everybody knows about Aleister Crowley. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, very few people actually want to discuss, um, want to discuss, uh, they want to, they want to discuss L. Ron Hubbard and uh, how, how um, evil Scientology is and how it is, um, it is, possibly one of the world religions that they're trying to, to set up in place that Satan wants to use to try to control people and everything. But that was definitely a really excellent episode that you guys did on, on, on Jack Parsons. Um, you guys got anything to talk about that episode or anything you guys learned from it? <laughs> uh, well, thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought <laughs> we were, I was worried about that because it was kind of, uh, yeah, it was weird how, I was reading this old book that uh, it was really weird that the, the essay that we ended up reading out of was yes. it's like not found online anywhere. And I found it in this obscure um, like collection. It, the, the book itself was really weird. And so uh, it was called uh, Apocalypse Culture. If anyone wants to read it, that's the that's the book. It was written by Adam Parfney or whatever. And uh, so if you want to go read that the source text but yeah i was gonna say i'm happy you enjoyed it because I, I was worried that uh it was a little too uh i don't know <laughs> i didn't think it translated well or i was worried about that's one i was worried yeah. about recently so well yeah. well i mean i i have a, i have a huge knowledge rosie about um a scientology and everything and I've, I've studied it extensively over many years um and i've also followed the work of josh reeves is also um mm-hmm. I studied a lot, uh, too, as well. Um, and, um, he, um, he, he talks, you know, a lot about Josh Reeves' work with Scientology. He talks a lot about, um, the way that Scientology is, is set up, um, through MKUltra programming, um, through, you know, through the CIA early in, in its inception in the late forties, mm-hmm. um, to kind of, control people and try to get them to, to break them down and kind of fracture their soul mm-hmm. uh, so that, you know, they won't be able to understand that what they're, what they're being sold to them is, is to kind of, you know, put demons into them. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't know as both, you know, Rosie and Tara, both you guys, you know, discussed about that is that the whole Freighter X guy, that is L Ron Hubbard. And L. Ron yeah. Hubbard was having correspondence with um, Aleister Crowley, yeah. and, and, and Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard were having this, you know, love triangle type thing, and yeah. they were also trying to do that one uh, working. Yeah, you know, I think that it also too. A lot of people, when they start to think about Scientology, they they really don't dig into who Ron L. Hubbard was oh, and. L. Ron. Or L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, I don't. I always say it the wrong way, but uh, they don't look into who he was. And and when you look at that expose with Jack Parsons, you see how he stole his wife and how he shystered him out of money, and then he took off running. And it just gives you an idea of who this guy was, his character, and uh, the fact that he was a, a science fiction writer, 
all of those things play into what the end result of this cult that he ends up launching really just to pad his own pocket, you know? And there certainly was satanic influence behind it because the guy was, you know, motivated in the wrong ways, but he was probably empowered uh, through all of the satanic uh, open doors and witchcraft and the occult that he was involved with when even back with Parsons and Crowley and those guys, you know? Yeah, very much so. And, and, and them trying to bring about the Antichrist upon the world, you know, most people when they, what about that one show that they did on, um, uh, about Jack Parsons, they did try to talk, I guess a little bit about the occult on CBS, you know, but they're not, you know, most people before then the past, I'd say the past 10 or 20 years, most people just thought it's Jack Parsons and rocketry, yeah. you know, not his, his involvement <laughs> right. with Aleister Crowley or L. Ron Hubbard, <laughs> right. you know, and, and them trying to bring the literal antichrist, uh, through this, Stargate, uh, which was the Babylon, uh, you know, working uh, that they were that they were trying to do, um, which even um, Aleister Crowley said, "You guys are crazy yeah. uh, for 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 doing that." And I'm not saying that, you know, I try to excuse Aleister Crowley at all. I'm just saying, you know, it is what it is in his letters back and forth between the three of them. Um, it's pretty and bad. Of course, it's, had- it's pretty bad when Aleister Crowley's telling you that you're crazy. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the hedonist, uh, you know, that he is. Um, and, you know, being, you know, and it, so it, it, you leave with that. And, you know, a lot of Christians just don't know how truly evil, you know, a lot of things that even the American government has done uh, to some degree, some being sanctioned and some things not being sanctioned, or even how evil truly Scientology is. You know, they just look at them as a, a cult. They're practicing things like Dianetics and using e-readers and stuff like that and everything and but they don't really understand that it truly comes from uh these occult beliefs and mk ultra and central intelligence agency and everything um and did they overlook that part you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say uh it is interesting when you think of uh a created religion oh i'm sorry (laughs) i was speaking too far away from the microphone yeah thanks Uh, um it's interesting to think of, uh, you, you know, a religion that started up and it primarily uh, targeted the rich and famous. Like that sounds perfect for um, to get access to these people that can cross borders and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, be used as assets that can, you know, be very unassuming. And uh, it, it is interesting. Um, I haven't dug too deep into this, but there is the uh the past uh, the occultist like Aleister Crowley I believe was a spy for um Britain back in uh either World War 1 yes yeah. British intelligence yeah and then John D uh I think he was he was also used as a spy as well so there, it's interesting that the there is you know uh particularly with these like charismatic for lack of a better term like occultists tie in directly with the intelligence agencies so it's uh it seems perfect that you know a man a a clearly uh orchestrated hollywood based religion like scientology you know it's just like fascinating to think about that and that's like the perfect example of uh like something that's created by the intelligence you know i saw something too you're you're talking about kind of uh, just sort of like unpacking it a little bit, but I just saw a news report uh, this week. It was maybe yesterday or day before yesterday about um, a family doing a, an interview and they were molested. So even the pedo junk that we see in all these other cultic stuff, uh, it's apparent in there evid- evidently as well. What do you mean? What family? Uh, it was just a family that escaped out of... Um, oh, Scientology. Yeah, out of Scientology. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, right. and uh, the girl was just talking to the woman. She's like in her 40s now. I was talking about how uh, after their church's services or whatever, they would um, have lunches, and then and then there would be regular molestations happening. Hmm. So that that you guys do have to send me that link. I'm gonna have to see that one. That one. Um, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, what does it doesn't surprise me? Right. Stuff yeah. that was going on with um, Scientology uh, covering up uh, Danny Masterson's uh, crimes mm-hmm. and everything, and then Scientology trying to infiltrate uh, the United States government, as Bumless said in the chat with Operation. Snow White, yeah, yeah, and uh, and, and so I mean it's it's 
Scientology definitely is, Christians kind of look at it as just being this weird, you know, cult, like you said, of, uh, you know, Hollywood based, uh, which also, you know, if you turn a whole bunch of Hollywood uh, agents and bring them into your religion in quotation marks, then you have a lot of spies, you know, in a lot of ways that you can gather information and compromise people um, using them too as well. Um, but with Scientology, they also have the free zone. I don't know if you guys knew about this, mm. um, where people, um, who, uh, you know, aren't part of the church that aren't part in quotation marks of the church of Scientology, but they can go out and, 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 and act, um, as free zoners, hmm. um, and kind of, you know, not be affiliated with the church of Scientology, but yet they, they are, um, so and, and you, you, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of uh, Jim Mars, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the fa- New York Times uh, bestseller uh, author, right? Mm-hmm. He I... um go no, ahead. Go ahead. no no go, go ahead no no I was gonna say he um he uh, supposedly was uh, was a Scientologist. Uh, Josh Reese had exposed uh, some of his connections to Scientology, and I remember you know a couple more a couple of years ago. Um, uh, about four or five years ago now, um, where Jim Mars is going around on different uh, programs, uh, um, being the spokesperson for Battlefield Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> and they, you know, he's going out. This is an excellent book, you know. And I'm right. like, oh, is, is it Jim? That's a little weird, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, but yeah, Scientology is going to be something where, you know, there are a few people out there including myself, I think it might be one of the religions that they're going to try to push um, if they do the false alien evasion uh, hmm. with Project Blue Beam that Serge Montas has always talked about of, uh, of then ended up being, um, you know, them trying to make it the one world religion. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that's possible that they might try to push that as such? Uh, definitely. the narr- They would fit well if it was, yeah. if they weren't the 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 primary agent, you know, that would become the religious system or whatever, they definitely fit well uh, with whatever would become that because of the whole science fiction and the space and the, the, the just basically what they've kind of built themselves as. Um, what's crazy about the whole alien thing to me is that uh, it's a huge, and, and we, not to toot our own horns, but we did an episode just a few weeks ago <laughs> as well of, uh, on alien abductions. And what's interesting to me is just like with Kyle Odom and with other things, these aliens have these nefarious sort of tendencies to them. And when yes. you, when you see how that could tie in with, with, with Scientology is they're always trying to bring out what is bad with people, uh, into, uh, you know, fix them, heal them, make them, you know, bring them up to an elevate them, you know, yeah, I was gonna say I, I don't know. My, my mind's just been tracking with this. Uh, uh, my my brain's been putting connections together. When you're still talking about, I don't want to backtrack a little bit, but this might be kind of interesting. Um, like the I know uh, there's this term. If you've seen like the movie, uh, there's this old movie with uh, not that old with uh, Al Pacino. Uh, it's called The Recruit. I can't remember what the other guy. Um, it's about a CIA agent, but they talk about like they have the these undercover. It's basically what did you say? The free people or free zoners? Free zoners. Yeah, uh, they have that concept in in like the regular intelligence community. They call them NOX, non official yes. cover operatives. So it's interesting, right there, that you brought that up. That they have this uh, position, or <laughs> you know, like they say they have the same thing with that. And uh, even thinking of. Um, like the the e meters, I think that's what they call them. Where they, it seems like the whole uh, what you're talking about, Turner, the the pro- prop process of breaking someone down. Yeah. Um, yeah. It that sounds like what the intelligence agent. It, it sounds like a polygraph. I mean, they're trying to tell the lies, and you know, they they might say it one way of we're trying to clear your bad. I I don't, I don't know enough about the actual e readers how they do what the terms they use to go clear. I think is that. I, or whatever yeah. you know, like clear out the aliens or whatever it is. I don't. I'm not too knowledgeable about Scientology, so forgive me with that. But it seems like uh, something that's really you know the a polygraph machine. So it's it just that's just been really sticking with me that they have these 
terms and they use these techniques that are straight out of like literally the CIA's playbook or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and as far as uh, like the one world government, I just read this um, this book. It was by Jack Vallée. Uh, Vallée. I'm bad with French pronunciations. But he, it was from, uh, I think, like s the 70s. It was called Messengers of Deception. And he it, all it is is about these UFO cults um, at the time. And he's trying to figure out, you know, why all these UFO cults are popping up um, right after, like, the era of the, uh, I guess, the hippies are starting to die out. And you have, like, these Christian things. So it's this weird, you know, the, the 70s. And so he basically is like breaking all these things down into um, commonalities that are all inherent in all these groups. Like basically he's going to all these crazy UFO cults um, that and one of the basis of them is like they have a charismatic leader who claims direct contact with UFOs. <laughs> like an alien came down and gave him this message or whatever. And he's in direct contact with them still. And basically, the so that you know, that's kind of the those kind of groups, and uh, they all across the world, all these unrelated uh, groups all have the same messages that they start to get from uh, these aliens, these beings, and it's all about uh, you know, we're gonna have d destruction of personal property, it's all gonna be these like hippie commune, uh, destroy the government, you know, like this stuff. Um, they're replacing the idea of God in the sense that um, which, but this is a really interesting angle. I'll, I'll, I'll circle back to it. By their basically uh, they, these, they, the claims are that these aliens came down and they're like, oh, you know, all these past things that humans did, these accomplishments that, you know, um, he, you know, maybe I would say as like a Christian of, you know, we're blessed with these brains to use and, you know, humans can figure it out on ourselves and look at all these cool achievements that we've, and not in like a boasting way, but just like a cool way. And, um, alien, you know, these aliens, the narrative across the board was, you know, you didn't do anything. You guys are stupid. You guys are just aliens or I'm sorry, you guys are animals. And it took like this outside power that isn't God to come in and bring all this stuff. So it's really this, dehumanizing um, thing that takes away any um, special importance you know like the elevation uh, that we are placed uh, that humans are placed above animals you know in a Christian worldview is completely demolished and you got it, this leveling down so it's kind of interesting I don't know that's where I've kind of been lately and, and as far as it, so saying all that stuff is there anything with Scientology that would be interesting to see um if any of that stuff lines up with them, I'm not too sure. I, I don't know offhand if it, there's any, um, where they're trying, like what you're mentioning also too, I guess with the modern green movement of them trying to put animals above humans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas as a Christian, it's vice versa. We have dominion over the earth, not dominion as like a dominionist will take like, you right, know, right, we, right. we control every, but, but dominion as in, we have dominion over, you know, the, 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 the animals and the plants, and, you know, the land, but we're supposed to be kind stewards of it as well. Right. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, 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 but that is something that the new age movement seems to be pushing very strongly, um, in that, and you, you'll see it with, um, uh, many, many, uh, vegan, it's not all of them will have the mentality that animal life is more important than human life. Yeah. Um, and even though I will say that most um, vegans will still use porcine derived insulin, for example, if they were a type one diabetic to save their own life. But I digress. <laughs> um, I, 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 it just, I, I, I don't know. It, it, how, are you guys seeing that more and more? I guess we can move on to, you know, away from Scientology for a minute and pivot more towards, the new age and everything. Are you guys seeing that more? Um, are you seeing some Christians that are falling? Mm. Uh, not for veganism necessarily per se, <laughs> but uh, 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 seem to you know put their pets for you know or 
put animals ab- above humans. Are you oh, guys yeah. seeing that at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the younger generation, your 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 um, older Gen Zs, younger millennials, um, definitely have a tendency to have a high value on creation um, and respect for. You know, they they they'll be like, you know, if you don't recycle, they look down on you, and those type of it's sort of that type of real that mentality, that eco green mentality, and certainly they have no problem with abortion, but if you kill a baby seal, you should be put in jail. You know, that's that's a typical mindset for them. And and I think what's happening is it's it's so our it, the culture, the public school system, there's there's an all encompassing um kind of uh mindset that's being pushed upon them and they don't they're not discerning and the Christian worldview has been has taken a back seat. I mean, if we're going to be honest, we, right now we are in a completely post-Christian, you know, era in our nation's history right now. Uh, even though there's mega churches and even though there's, you know, perhaps millions of Christians in our country, the culture by and large is post-Christian. And so this the, it's a secondary thought of God. So that turns you to uh, new age if you have any spiritual side to you or just straight up atheism or world you know just a uh, um, humanistic kind of mindset and so when you take those when you adopt those mindsets you know it's going to shape your culture to be exactly what that is you know the the problem I have with like this whole green movement is that there's there is no scientific verification for a lot of this global warming and the things that they are touting and it's if you bring it up as any type of criticism you're you're looked at as like just an unbelievably hardened person that's like either your head's in the sand or you're ignorant or you know the worst one is they call you a racist for whatever reason so <laughs> yeah. yeah and none of us are, none of us are sitting there saying go out there and pollute and trash and right. you know i mean you know jesus and god would not want us to to you know do that we're not saying that at all but but i do agree that with the way the world order is structured, everything they want, you know, they can fly around in their in their private jets and, and power their <laughs> huge mansions and and no issue with that whatsoever. Or, or you know, strip my because they all put it on to us through social engineering mm-hmm. that it's our fault because we own an iPhone yeah. or we own an Android phone because of all the slave labor it took. Right. Um, we'll say the iPhone for example, you know, Cupertino Parks, you know, all mm-hmm. the slave labor it took to mine. And to, and to to build and everything that um, it's our, it's our fault it's our problem because we wanted it so it's, it's, it's put it's put on it's almost like a cremation of care yeah like they do with the Bohemian Grove right uh, to, to to absolve their sins and to place it upon us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it is um, it is getting into the church too that's that's a big red flag for me um, you've seen churches celebrate Earth Day. You know, on Sundays, like some of, more of your mainline traditional churches that have moved into the liberal theology, you know, um, they they've already embraced you know homosexuality as uh, as a valid lifestyle. You know, that's un, that's God has is for for whatever reason God's chosen to overlook that, um, and so you're seeing it creep into the church. More of your conservative churches that are still more biblically based are holding ground, but um, within the ranks of those congregations, you'll find variances of beliefs, and it's because people are not discerning. They haven't been they haven't been taught what is the truth behind these movements and what they actually mean, and how do they connect it with the Bible? And that's a big problem. You know, that's a really big problem because we should be speaking into our culture. What is truth about these things? Well, yeah, I mean, but again, of all these people, look what a majority of the churches that they're going towards, going to, you know, mega churches, uh, new apostolic reformation type churches. They're not, they're not getting, they're not having their pastor read uh, from the Bible to do a sermon, you know, or, or you know, yeah. the church that I go to, the pastor reads. Um, we go through, we're going through a book of book of the Bible and it might take months, you know, but yeah. he's reading the part and discussing it and exegesis and everything. And, and that, that's how it should be done. But, 
when you go to, or at least if you're, if you're, it may not have to be exactly, you know, from read line by line from a book until you're done, but at least there should be enough where if you're reading a part of the Bible that you read some before it's, you know, the context Mm -hmm. and then, you know, but no one's doing that anymore. They're not doing any, they're not, they're barely touching their Bibles, you know, and, and that, that's becoming a major problem. And Christianity is because eventually you have people up there who start uh, giving false doctrine, which, you know, it does talk about that that, that, that will later increase, you know, over, I'm paraphrasing, I have the exact Bible verses in front of me, but it, that it would increase, you know, and, and it seems, you know, many people also are preaching for shameful gain too as well. And, yeah. and so because of that, since, you know, I, it was, I mean, start, I mean, think about it, both. I want to ask you, both of y'all, um, when I was a kid growing up and I went to school, well, I was school at church, Sunday school, you know, you would give a, a Bible lesson and that was it, you know, and then it so became these lessons that you remember, but you don't really remember anything around those lessons. You know what I mean? So there's this, the foundation is so shaky now to begin with, even when I was growing up that I wouldn't even, wouldn't even want to see how shaky it is now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, you know, oh, I mean, that's a whole different topic, what they're doing <laughs> in the church with these kids. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting that what you said there about the um, the teaching the Bible and all of that. Um, the problem, it's like uh, so. All right, so let me let me tra- let me change gears for a second. Uh, somebody today, this I sent this to Rosie, um, a friend of mine. Uh, he lives in another country, and he got evident. And I trust this guy; he gets some pretty good intel. But he he put on there there could be 1.5 million chinese people infected with the coronavirus right now and uh somebody said well at that rate the way it's spreading that could be like like in the book of revelation where it talks about 25 percent of the earth is going to be you know fall to plague into pestilence and sickness and and i started thinking when you were talking about like uh the green movement and all that well at the end of the book in Revelation, there's some pretty heinous stuff that's going to happen to the earth, man. <laughs> like the oceans yeah. are going to be pretty gnarled out. The, there's going to be fires, earthquakes. The earth is not going to get better, and we're not going to slow that down. Like there's no way that we're going to stop it that. You can't, can't stop entropy. Exactly. Yeah. And you can't stop God's wow. hand moving in judgment. That's just the way it goes. But you can't force it to happen quicker either. No, yeah. you're right. Which was, some people are trying to do too. <laughs> yeah. so. I was going to say, I, I feel kind of guilty when you guys were talking about it because my uh, my go-to line whenever someone complains about climate change was I always just kind of brashly say like, yeah, I don't care. Let the world die i don't care why would i care about uh (laughs) you know like leaving a planet for my great grandkids that aren't going to remember me and uh you know (laughs) it usually shuts them down pretty good but um in in a more i don't know to touch back to this as far as the it really is like a religion like this green movement um has started it's overtaken because they put you know what do they call it mother gaia you know that the earth as a living being and they take this real new age approach to um I, i'm just thinking of like the giving tree you know that old uh, book where the the whole essence of the book is like the earth provides everything and we just crap on it you know what i mean and we're just terrible people and the earth has these feelings and like all that stuff and that's really what it's been about and um as far as like so it's become this deathly like religion this zealot you know these people are zealots that like what is her that autistic girl um greta whatever her name is <laughs> that girl um like she's been placed in like this i mean what did, she's I, up for a nobel peace prize by yeah the, and what did all she say she said like oh you guys are bad people how and dare you the, the planet yeah uh, i've been off social media for a while but I don't know exactly what she said, <laughs> but she's like talking about it with this like religious fervor and like pointing at these people like you're going to kill all of us. Like you guys are going to kill all of us. Yeah, but people. she is brain. Greta Thunberg is is brainwashed oh, yeah. to some degree to get it. And I, I, I do feel sorry for her in that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. standpoint. Because so many people out there, they, they you know, they, they're yelling at a little girl. It's like you should be mad at her parents. 
yes. in a system that they believe in, <laughs> you know, I mean, there is, you get a lot of that too. Yeah. So. But it, it, I mean, just, I think back to like, uh, you know, you'll hear all these people where they're talking about like the cold war. And, um, obviously I wasn't old enough to remember those like drills that they always talk about, like, Oh, how evil was it that like kids had to prepare for like a nuclear explosion and like they had to hide under their desk and like these kids you know evil reagan you know he's escalating all this stuff you know for just go with the narrative for a second you know that we're you know stoking these things and we're not you know there's going to be this nuclear fallout that's going to kill everyone and everyone kind of looks back and they're like oh that all that fear mongering and that's the same stuff that's going on right now like where you have generations of people that literally think um everyone's going to die if we don't stop something that brings like that's a religious um connotation it's a religious fervor with it yeah and uh it's it's really i don't know it, it's very nihilistic and uh it, it kind of puts things into perspective when you think about like the rate of like the suicide rate of like all these kids is like going up at like exponential rates i, I was reading something I, th I think it was I, I might be talking completely out of my butt but I <laughs> remember it being something like the suicide rate between like 9 and 14 year olds has r r risen 50% over the last year mm -hmm. and like when you look at stuff like that like teen suicide all this crazy stuff and you know I'm, I, I'm sure that there's other elements to it like social the rise of social media um, that has contributed to to the suicide rate but overall, just this very nihilistic worldview um, that is just being pushed on people, you know, like you're going to, you know, the world's going to burn. And if you don't separate your brown glass from your green glass, um, that's going to go to the same landfill anyways. Like you're contributing to the death of millions of people and like all this stuff. It, I think that's just it's so evil and there's no hope. And that's why, you know, I. I I think it's very evil and it, it it's the overarching worldview is just just completely nihilistic. There's no hope in that, you know what I mean? No, there's not. And, there's no hope in that. Yeah. You know, uh right. the the thing that came to my mind we were talking about just the whole idea cuz the new age okay, so the new age is going to be this all it's it's going to be an umbrella and underneath that umbrella of the new age you're going to find alien worship or alien Alienology. I don't know what he, what the proper word would be for it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just the whole idea of the alien deception that's going to be folded up in there. Um, you're going to have the old the old mainstays of you know the um, you know the the cult the big you know uh, uh, religions that influenced New Age into America back in the 60s and earlier um eastern religion yeah the eastern thank you i'm kind of brain farting right now because <laughs> there's something i'm getting a point i'm going to get to um but and they all kind of fall under the same thing and, and obviously earth worship is going to be a part of that um because they've they've literally been blinded from god so when you turn your eyes and your heart away and you turn you turn into worshiping other things you you blind yourself from the truth and I just think of the book of Romans at the end of chapter one, where he's like, they exchanged the truth for a lie. And because of that exchange of that truth for that lie, they God hardened their hearts and he allowed them to experience all kinds of beliefs, you know, and, and that's going to be one of them. In fact, I have it right here. Can I just read it for a second? Yes, of course. It's, it's one, it's chapter one, verse 24. It just says, therefore God gave them over to their, oh, I'm sorry. Um, verse 21, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and they exchanged the glory of immortal God for images made to look like mortal man, birds and animals and reptiles. And then he also speaks that how they, uh, they go on to worship the created things rather than the creator. So uh, it's just a natural it's a supernatural thing that's happening in our culture because we've turned away from God. And so it's no, it doesn't surprise me that new age is on the rise and uh, al people want to believe in aliens. You know, I loved when I, before I was a Christian, when I was a little kid, man, aliens just excited me. Like the first movie that had a major impact on me was star Wars. And when I saw aliens close encounters, uh, the, or close encounters of the third kind, yeah. 
I, it actually kind of frightened me because it was kind of a scarier more of to me it Did you was. never see fire uh fire in the sky i never saw fire in the sky oh. <laughs> but uh but i always wanted it to be true i always wanted there to be life on other planets and and receive this you know intelligence from them and this knowledge and stuff um and it wasn't until i came into the knowledge of the true creator god that's when the veil was lifted and then i realized okay that's that's not even realistic at this point you know what i'm saying yeah, I mean, look, look, look where we are now. With our people, even think that them, themselves are gods at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And, and like, yeah, I mean, like you were you were saying, Turner. I mean, it, it, people have. Um. I mean, how many times in the Bible did the Jews worship idols? You know, I mean, if we're you know looking looking at it through a biblical lens, I mean, quite frequently, I mean, the judges. Mm-hmm. That God had to send to to recorrect the Jewish people, um, and 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 even the the, gen, the Gentiles were having issues with idols uh, during the time of Christ uh, when they were trying to convert the Gentiles, which would be the majority of the the Roman population of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Um. So there's no. I mean, there's no difference. So human beings, human nature hasn't changed since the fall yeah. of right. man. Uh. And so we have you know numerous idols that we look to on a daily basis that we, um, you know, should, should do our best to, to, to try to reject, um, and, 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 and people try to put place people above God or try to put things above God. And it definitely causes a, a problem. And that's many things that Christians have to, to, to deal with. Um, but we you know, even, you know, we send still and, you know, and, and it, it becomes, could be very difficult. Um, especially when, of a person goes to a church and they don't have a good pastor that will sit there and read scripture to them and tell them that they are making a mistake and that it's live your best life now. Right. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, live yeah. your best life now. Jesus wants you to live your best life now. Okay. Um, you know, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure that you, you, they should definitely be saying, uh, that to the uh, Chinese Christians who are persecuted for their faith. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're living their best life right. now. Right. Yeah. Um, and their best life won't be in the, you know, an afterlife, you know, when, for, for their uh, dedication and belief in Jesus Christ. Uh, so it's just, it, it just, Christianity has, has, at least in the United States, is, is, has, has, you know, broken apart. You have so many different denominations and so many different beliefs and so many different mega churches. And, 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 and it's very difficult now for a person unless they, you know, have the power of discernment, um, to, to try to, if you're a Christian to try to, you know, find, uh, which the correct church to, to go to. And even then, I mean, it's got to the point where I believe that you and I, you know, we're all having fellowship right now and people are listening to that, you know? And, and I think in most cases, churches should be very small, um, and, and be able to do the work. Cause I think the larger something gets, the more corrupted eventually will end up becoming, mm-hmm. um, not all the cases, but majority of cases. So, I mean, the Christians don't, they're not, you like, you're, you're right. Uh, Turner, they're not told that homosexuality is a sin. They're not told that God will give them everything that they ask for that won't, God won't give them everything that they ask for right then and now. Okay, because our will does not supersede God's will. Right. They're 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 not told that they're supposed to hold God's Ten Commandments. They're not told that they're supposed to read their Bible. They're you know they're 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 not told any of this stuff. Instead, the pastor just you know goes and stands up and gives platitudes and stories and makes them feel good about themselves. And they give money to the church and then they go home. <laughs> you know, I mean that that's that's where we're at at this moment and because of that. Um, it's, 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 it's a problem. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's causing major issues for, for this country. It's causing major issues for Christians yeah. because people are falling away from the faith and record numbers because they just don't want to go to church. Why bother? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's becoming a major problem. I was, I was joking with Rosie earlier this week, I'm not really joking, I was thinking, I think I have an idea for a book, (laughs) and it's called Raised by Wolves, and it's really an expose on why there's such a lack of discernment in the church today, in the evangelical church today, 
and it would it would go back to the fact that their their spiritual leaders, their pastors, are not they're not shepherds, they're wolves. They're not doing the job that they've been mandated in scripture no. to do. And so what happens is you have a flock of people that a whole generation of people that lack the discernment and the understanding. And it goes back to what you were saying, John. It's just like, hey, it's we're gonna find these things. They're gonna be plain in the scripture. You just have to look in the word of God. And and so that's that's really the answer for it. But but man, I'm seeing more and more churches just fall into new age traps all the time with different things. You know, yoga, um, the Enneagram, we did a whole thing on that. And I, that just, the Enneagram makes me want to spit. It makes me so frustrated. Um, the the way that it's just growing in popularity right now and uh, its origins that are s- just straight into the new connected, age. Should connected, connected to Russia too as well, the Enneagram is, but continue. To, to, the, to Russia, really? Yeah, it has Russian connections too. Yeah, yeah. it does. The KGB and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? What? You got to tell me yeah, about this. Does. I did not know that. You got to tell it me. It does. Um, I'll have to get the information from my friend C.S. Joseph. But yeah, the, yeah, we've talked about it before. He's not a fan of the Enneagram at all. Um, now, he does a little bit of a modified uh, Jungian analytical, psychological, you know, like your personality types and mm-hmm. stuff like that and everything. But it's a little bit different than the Enneagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, and so the Enneagram, yeah, he's talked about it many times about it having Russian KGB or origins <laughs> and he showed me the proof. I don't have it on me on hand. I can't, oh, you dude. know, I, I, but I'll definitely get it from him and I'll, I'll, send, I'll send it to you guys. Yeah, but yeah, please. maybe you could end up doing a part two about that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. Um, dude, we can always count but... on John to drop a little <laughs> bomb on us every time. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember listening to y'all's episode. I was like, I wonder if they're going to talk about this because I didn't really know until I actually looked. And, you know, because he was talking about it, I was like, whoa, you know, it does seem like it does have Russian, you know, KGB origins. Uh, Enneagram does. It also has this a little, little bit of theosophy run, you know, yeah. you know, rolled into one, too, as well with Enneagram, too. I mean, you get some even with Jungian analytical psychology. Carl Jung was a yeah. theosophist and a Gnostic, but. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just, it's just it's interesting that with, with it all, um, it, but they're, but they're, you're right. They're, they're accepting yoga with the Kundalini, Lani, Kund- oh, <laughs> Kundalini spirit. There we go. The, yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, and then, you know, just yoga opening, you know, something people think it's something as harm, harm, harmless as that, but you know, meditation opening up people definitely people who are, who are spiritually blind opening them up i'm not saying that even as a christian we should not practice any divination or anything like that but i'm just saying yeah. with people people are especially very extremely vulnerable to it you know just much like kyle odom was you know you, you get possessed yeah. it happens spirits and demons go in the end um and then it becomes much of a problem yeah yeah I don't. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, the Kundalini spirit, man. That's a crazy thing to start researching, man. It's just a matter of time. I'm seeing, and you know, so you segment off, like you talk about New Age influence, right? And it's really old. Yeah. It's really not new. It's old. It's just old Eastern stuff. But uh, w- when you look at charismatic branches of evangelical Christianity today, I see more and more New Age creeping into some of these. Uh, ultra charismatic like when i and I'm, i'll call him out i got bethel yeah right i'll just say it yeah bethel's yeah. one of the worst ones yeah yeah well they have like the uh what it, or correct turning you're gonna know what i'm talking about they have they use basically a ouija board mm. and tarot cards and i think yeah they, what, what do they call the tarot cards oh what are like they called angel, angel, an, angel readings or angel something reading, like that yeah, yeah. yeah. Either they're destiny destiny destiny, 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 cards. Cards. destiny cards yeah it's and I think it's a spirit board is what they call yeah, it or something like yeah. that. It's just it's like your guardian it's angels just giving divination. right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so absolutely insane that uh, like it really says something about the the uh, the state of um, American church. It's discern. It, it's just discernment. Well, they just don't have it. Well, I mean, I think that this is way past discernment when they're using like literal um, demonic devices that have absolutely no um 
like I'm gonna I'm gonna do say this just to, for to play a little bit of devil's advocate or just uh, or just go with me on this. All right. So yeah. I know the enneagram is evil, but there that's like one of the things that uh, or with meditation might be a better example. Yeah. Where like Christians or yoga, where they're like, oh, there's nothing particularly wrong with stretching, you know, and you know, there, there's more of a case that you know, obviously, I don't I don't think yoga because all of the crazy eastern religious stuff that goes into it and all that stuff so that but you can make a case for like a christian oh what's wrong with doing this stretching position because it helps my lower back that just happens to be uh downward dog or you know something like that but there's a difference like that maybe discernment is like oh you might be a little off or let's see what where your heart's at or something like that but it's just like completely jump the shark when they're using like something that has no christian uh applicable thing that's purely evil by all objective standards of like tarot cards and a ouija board like there's that uh, i, I want to say that that's so far past bad discernment that that's into a organized like thing that is an infiltration like that's the first steps of like in an uh, outright infiltration of some sort of uh agenda you know what i mean like it's just it's way past discern you know lack of discernment on behalf of pastors to do that that's straight into like being led by evil you know that, that's how i yeah see yeah it, no i agree is... i agree with you on that any any pastor that permits that into their church or promotes it they're they're just a wolf that's, at the worst yeah yeah or, at, i mean at, at the best, best. At yeah, the yeah best they're a wolf right. you know i and and a lot of it too. It's like so. <laughs> I would love to crack the the financial records of Bethel just to see what annually the giving is for a church like that. Like, are they annually in the twenty million dollar range <laughs> or more? You know, I know Hillsong's a billion dollar industry yeah. for for worship music, and that plays into it. So if if I have to let some weird Ouija board come in just to keep the money rolling in, well then I guess that's what I got to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's just sad. It's pathetic. Yeah, I mean, definitely brings it in uh, for you to go get. And if you, ever, you guys ever watched uh, Fighting for the Faith, mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of the the Lutheran pastors. I think it was Chris or I'm, I'm blanking on his name, but he had people. Uh, he was breaking down. Um, he's really good uh, breaking down uh, what people say and then comparing it to the Word of God using exo uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, but he, um, he had the people that were doing those, uh, spirit boards and those tarot car readings and everything. Yeah. And, um, he, um, they, they would ask him questions like, you know, this one woman's like, I've had many tarot readings done, you know? And they're like, well, is there any difference between, uh, having, you know, the spirit board and, or the destiny board and, you know, having an angelic reading and having a regular tarot reading. And the woman literally goes, No. <laughs> wow. at first and then later you know so it's like there's no different yeah i i wanted to pull this up because i you just brought up hillsong and you're talking about the financial thing because i remember reading this and maybe this is something that people aren't aware of that maybe some discernment i i i forgot about this the founder of hillsong church's dad um was accused of oh. abusing children so yeah, that's was, that's wow, really? that's been around for yeah, that's been yeah. around. That that was like in the late seventies, early eighties, I think, yeah. somewhere in that time frame. But yeah, so even but he even, never was he was accused. Never it never went to trial. I think there was a financial um, settlement out of court or something like that. Yeah, but I was gonna just I just started thinking about that when you said looking into the financial records. Yeah, I wonder how many uh, yeah of these big churches. Are, uh, well, they're all incorporated. They're all 501c3s, and they also are incorporated. And there's a, I mean, that's a whole other – we could do a whole yeah, episode yeah, on, on megachurch. That's just a different animal, but – and I don't want to get on a soapbox because I can do that pretty <laughs> easy. Oh, yeah, we could do – we'll definitely do another uh, – we'll talk about the Southern Baptist Convention and uh, Judge Paul Pressler, Council for National Policy member, and mm. his uh, prayer, deal, prayer deal, I'm gonna, uh, his his fondness for young boys, supposedly, allegedly. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, all, a lot of those mega churches, they're very corrupt. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and their money doesn't go to helping the poor, 
um, in the, the, you know, the Christians in their local community. It's always interesting. That's one thing I always, I'm not saying that, you know, Christians shouldn't go to uh, other countries um, and do missionary work. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. However, I do think that most of our churches should primarily focus in their own communities because their own communities are having trouble enough as it is yeah. um, of trying to take care of one another and trying to support one another. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and Christians are a very big part of charity. Um, and that's how, you know, the original charity systems were in the United States before we got government sponsored um, welfare uh, was uh, through charity, you know, community charity like that, yeah, yeah. Um, and everything, and, and and that that is one thing that I think is, is I think the more something becomes global, the more money's brought into something, the more it's likely to corrupt. Where something small and kept locally, it's more likely to possibly at least help more to some degree. Uh, um, yeah, I agree a hundred percent with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a whole animal, man. Um, when you start to think about what happens and, and, the, you know, and it's a vicious thing too, because I, I come out of a mega church. So I was there for many, many years in a mega church and, and there, there is a lot of good that they do, you know, um, it's, there is a lot of good that they do, but there's a lot more that they could do if they, if they weren't so concerned about having a, you know, repaving the parking lot every three years <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. I, I'm hesitating right now on, on purpose. I'm holding back a little bit, but all the things that come with uh, a big mega church that people in America want to go to, like why they would choose one church over the other. Right. Oh, they have better sound system and TV and the music's coffee shop. Cool. Or there's a coffee shop. And... I want that coffee. Give yeah. me that coffee. <laughs> Amen. Exactly. Hey man, come on. And, uh, and I don't know if all, Hebrews says that we should concern ourselves first with the household of faith. So when it comes to supporting and helping and assisting, the church should be looking after its own first. And so if you have a big church in a community and then you have a little church in a community, same community, and the little church is struggling for whatever reason, to pay rent or whatever, it, it should be natural for the big church to help them. They have the means. They should help them. It's part of the kingdom of God. It's not a... It's not a competition. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, they're not some, um, you know, they're not some uh, business that, oh, if, if they go out of business, then we'll get their customers too. Their, their, their people will come to us too. You know what I mean? It should be, hey, God wants that little congregation to be here. They, they serve a purpose we can't serve right now. They're reaching a, a part of the community we're not reaching. We want to help them. We should be willing to help them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that's, that's not sadly how it's not how it's said. It's not. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. Yeah. So and anyways, and, it, yeah. and it and it's and because of that, you know, it, it, it's, it the churches are suffering, the community suffering, um, and I mean, it's not. It, it gives it gives Christianity a bad name mm -hmm. to many people and stuff like that because they feel. Um, like when they get, you know, especially like new Christians and everything like that, or, or people who are, are, are on the fence are thinking about, you know, becoming Christians is when they see these mega churches and stuff like that and everything, they, 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 they're like, why bother? You know, and, you know, and, and, and what's the point, you know, and, and they become, they become, it drives people away uh, because it's all they think that Christianity is about is this, is this money and, and holier than thou type attitudes and, and, uh, you know, all the, all the sex scandals and, uh, you know, all this, all the, that's what all the negativity, that's what they, they, they consider it all to be when those are not the teachings of Christ or what Christianity is about. Yeah. And, and so, and, and so it's a, like, I could have summed it better, better earlier, Turner, where you talk about, you know, the wolf and, 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 and everything in, sh in sheep's clothing is that's what that's what they're that's what these pastors are doing. These wolves, they're they're getting all the fleece off their flock that they can. And they're not, you know, being shepherds with the good shepherd of trying to save their flock. They have to give them a, a better life the best that they can or are trying to, you know, make sure that they're their 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 beliefs are strong or sound or doing any of that or not they're just trying to 
get how what they can get out of their congregation and that's it you know and that's that's a major problem i mean have you guys seen the the family documentary on netflix yeah i think i've asked you, know, you guys just say remember when D- doug coe said that um we have to venerate sometimes you have to sit down and venerate or talk to the wolf king yeah you know mm. Yeah, that, that that's Satan. Why would I don't want to right. break bread with Satan? What was the point of that? Right. You know, and but a lot of those, um, uh, a lot of those dominionists, um, a lot of those, um, I'm trying to get an elect minded type okay. people. That's what they, they. That's how they look on things, mm-hmm. and that's twisted and it's twisted and warped as far as Christianity that you can ever get. You know, in Doug Coe's son and I, I forgot his he was the one that um taught out the wolf king but for he said something else too i remember exactly what it was uh well i mean i remember what he said but i don't remember who doug co's na- son's name was um but he said um it doesn't matter to me if you raped a girl hmm. because you're elected by god hmm. yeah. so like come on like <laughs> yeah. you know like that's insane that's insanity can, just so just imagine like uh, just imagine Jesus sitting around with his disciples, and one of them says that. <laughs> 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 what's what's the response from Messiah going to be? Right. Well, we already know that he. It's not beyond him to premeditate uh, making a whip and then driving him out. So right, I think right. he would probably not well, hesitate with some violence. I mean, he. He, I mean, he said, "Hey, one of you guys dips your hand in this bread. It's gonna just is gonna betray me tonight." Yeah. You know, right? So, I mean, he he foreshadowed all that, foretold it. But I guess my point is, is that that's how far we've moved away mm-hmm. from orthodoxy, from from just sound doctrine. Yeah, I was gonna say the whole thing. This kind of the kind of sums up like, oh, we're talking about all this stuff and how bad it looks. That kind of explains. Um, why uh, environmentalism just for an example not to keep harping on it but why that's so attractive in um because it's being placed it, it, i mean before you know caring about the environment wasn't placed on the you know the same level that it looks like a replacement for a religion you know what i mean and so when now that it's been placed on the same footing as oh you can choose to be jewish you can choose to be uh you know, like a coherent set of values that represents and encompasses uh, your life and everything that you, you know, you can derive meaning from and purpose in life and all these things. You know, it it didn't used to be these weird fringe uh, thinkings, you know, about that. (laughs) And it's, I think it's because the, the America, you know, at least here in the West or in America, the, the fact that the church is so bad that it just looks like another alternative that doesn't look that appealing from the outside. Like why would, you know, it, like you, I can rationalize it and thinking about it now where it's like, Oh yeah, you got these guys that, you know, they're sitting in there in this huge church and they're bringing in, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what's even $50 million. And they're sitting on the, they just bought land for $20 million and they're, put up this huge building and you know they're doing all this money but how much are they giving to the local community or something like that and you're like oh and the pastor's driving uh you know a big escalade a rolls royce yeah something like that yeah and he's dry he's fancy clothes you know he's got gold shoes or something like that and uh so you look at that and why would anyone want that from the outside like that looks it, it almost looks like that's the evil stuff compared to I want to be compassionate and save people. You know what I mean? So that's where like the environmentalism kind of steps in and fills the void of giving meaning and higher purpose just from looking at the outside when you compare the two. You know, one has this thing where they see as you're judgmental, blah, 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 blah. You're going to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. And they're not doing anything to back it up anymore. You can't say like, yeah, you know, why don't you come in here? We're doing all this good. You know, we live very modestly. Um, it kind of doesn't back it up. Like the the actions don't back up our words at all. And so someone from the outside might look and see the environmentalist movement and like, oh, at least they're trying to better people yeah. outside of themselves. Right. At least they have a uh, earthly greater mindset. They're caring about more people than just themselves, you know. 
So it, it kind of, exp- I think the, the failing of the church, uh, like it, there's a void that needed to be filled and environmentalism and the green movement has stepped up into the plate and it kind of looking from the yeah. outside looks like it fits good. You know what I mean? Like just from a very base oh, yeah. level outside, you judge, you know, this and that, um, the doctrine, so to speak, uh, seem good on the outside if you don't know anything. So I don't know. Oh, maybe... oh yeah, of course. No, no, I know you're a hundred, you're a hundred percent right, Rosie. I, I mean, they, it makes people feel good about themselves. It yeah. feels like they're contributing to their community and contributing to their families and their, you know, the kids of the earth will be here, all here a lot longer for them. Um, again, none of us are saying that doesn't mean that you don't try to cut down on waste the best you can and right, right. not destroy the earth. God doesn't want us to do that either. You know, we're not supposed to, you know, we're not supposed to, to damage, you know, the earth and, you know, be ungrateful. We're not, we're not, we're not saying that, but you're, but you're not also supposed to, you know, buy into the way the world order is selling it to you either. Mm -hmm. That you're supposed to put animals above humans, that you're supposed to, to go without, uh, for, you know, and live an aesthetic life. Um, and you know, it's, 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 you gotta have this balance, um, with, with, within that. But that's the thing is, is, you know, they look at, all these sex scandals in the church and all the debauchery that's in the church and, and all the, um, all the, um, uh, you know, the mega wealthy pastors. And I'm not saying that a pastor shouldn't, um, be able to provide for their family or have a nice house or have a nice car. Preaching. I'm not saying that, but however, I'm not saying they're not supposed to drive, you know, <laughs> a BMW and have, uh, you know, a mansion or any of that e- yeah. <laughs> either. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's so, it, 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 they see that and they're like, well, you know, well, being um, socially conscious and being environmentally conscious and stuff like that, that seems like caring for your fellow human being. Yeah. Um, you know, Christianity, that doesn't look like that. It just looks like rich people getting rich, mm-hmm. you know, and people sinning and, and people, you know, not caring about their fellow man and people hating on everything and not showing compassion. Therefore, I don't want that. So it causes a major problem. Mm-hmm. For a lot of people, um, because they, you know, they, they can't, they don't see Christians like us having this talk, right? you know, like right. they don't see that they, they see us as being, you know, bigoted or, or hateful or, 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 you know, any, any of that. And as a Christian, we you know, we, we want to bring people to Christ. We want people to be saved. We want people to turn away from their sin and, and try to, you know, to recognize it and, and, and to, you know, try to be a better person to try, to try to emulate Christ, you know, and, and, and to them, you know, to us, because, because of all that ilk that's gone with, you know, modern day Christianity as it's almost became, uh, you know, Christianity and quotation mark, all these branches like the new apostolic movement and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and um, the mega churches and, 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 and everything. It's, it's almost, that's Christianity for the new age. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, they're not practicing Christianity. They're practicing something else, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it, it's sad. It really is. Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't, uh, if you can't get them in the door, then you can't give them the good news. You know what I mean? Like if you're, if the outside, they don't, they don't, they don't care if we have the secret to, uh, I don't know. Like, if we had something else that was, well, I, we were never. It was never to get them in the door. The, the, well, it was always go out. It, the Great Commission is go, right? That was the commission. Yeah, I, I, so. I phrased that wrongly. I meant like, uh, if they can't get past the exterior of, like, if if someone is a friend of mine and they're watching me, and I am you know, saying like, oh yeah, you know, blah, 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 like the sanctity of marriage, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like hooking up with a bunch of chicks right. all the time and like wasting all my money and like... Which reminds you know. me, Rosie, we need to have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I, that's uh, that's something I'm definitely dealing with. I'm fighting them away. <laughs> the I'm women are all over you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah, but I mean, if like just if we're hypocritical on a personal level, and this is kind of basic Christianity 101, that if they don't even want, if they don't notice that there's anything different about the way I'm living my life, then they don't even care about the the message. It doesn't look like I'm have anything to offer them. 
Yeah, and, but uh, even non-believers and even other Christians have to realize too. I could I could see your point there, 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 Rosie, for sure. But I have to also say that we, even though you know, we, all, you know, all three of us are Christians, the flesh will still sin. Oh yeah, we, yeah, yeah. you know. And we, you, you, I, I'm not saying that there's a difference between holding someone accountable for their actions. As brothers in Christ, we're supposed to do that for one another, but we're all, but 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 we're not supposed to, you know, hold a finger out and you know and stuff like that. And a lot of the, 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 a lot of people don't realize that that too is you know they they think that Christianity is supposed to be as Christians we're supposed to be all accepting, you know, that Jesus was accepting. Uh, he was like the whole hippie, you know, the whole um, yeah. Catholicism wow uh, dogma Kevin Smith movie type Jesus. Yeah, buddy, nice, nice guy Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and, and <laughs> Jesus was not all that. You know, I'm not saying that he wasn't loving, and and it, but he was also there's also divine retribution to it too mm-hmm. as well, uh, aspect of Christ too. Um, so you know, whipping the money changers out of the temple. Um, so the thing is, is for Christians, we have to. At one hand, we have to put you know do our best to emulate Christ and to follow the Ten Commandments. And to revere God and to um, do our best, but we also have to realize that we also have this flesh, and the flesh will sin, and we have to do our best to strive against that. But realize that will happen, and we need to hold our Christian brothers accountable. But we also need to realize that too that people will fall. We need to do our best to, you know, give them a hand to help them back up. It's very complicated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're all having to do a whole bunch of different roles. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean I was trying to use that as like a example. No, I, t- I know, I, totally I know. Agree. I'm saying, yeah. in general, I wasn't you know go say you, Rosie, but they they the world has a, a lot of the world loves to think as Christians we're supposed to be perfect. Yeah, but we're not. We're still human. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of that's the beauty of grace, man. It's like nobody nobody's got it. Nobody's got it together. Like I don't know. The phrase I heard once was, "I'm just one." beggar pointing to other beggars where to find food you know <laughs> and it's like the picture of grace you know here i'm a fallen broken sinner man and guess you know even even though i'm forgiven i'm still a fallen broken sinner and uh i need i need help every day and i think that's kind of the so when you move into moralistic a moralistic theology where morals indicate salvation then you've already you've already lost them because this was this was the the tragedy of of a lot of people who are in their teenagers and they're young in their faith um they're always told don't drink don't smoke don't have sex before you're married all this stuff and it's all this moralistic stuff rather than pointing someone to the fact that hey guess what man your body is the temple of the holy spirit hey guess what god's a holy god and and he's created you in his image, and he has a, an amazing plan if you follow his will. And if you pollute your body or you do these things, uh, you're actually offending a holy God who is actually reserved a place in heaven for you at a high cost of the life of his son. So there's there's things that just were never communicated effectively for a big part of a generation. And um, we thought we were being effective, but we really weren't. We were just creating moralistic uh, you know, salvation, which is not a possibility in any way. Well, I was going to say, and you look to like contrasting that moralistic thing to um, like the new age thought where it turns everything positive, you know, rather when you have this Christian that says, you know, don't have sex, blah, 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 blah. Why shouldn't I have sex? Because it's bad. And you just get to like that point and then contrast that with like the hippie, like, hey, you're, you know, sex is like really you know, it feels good and you're showing love and it's all love. So just share like, you know, you can sleep with everyone. And, you know, it, it <laughs> kind of places it in more of this um, less of a judgmental way, you, you know, but it's very. So that, that's why this leftist uh, thing, if we if Christianity doesn't do it correctly, it the void is just filled with this thing that they can turn it into, um, you know, it's all about the here and now. Like when they say, oh, it feels good, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's why you should, you know, enjoy, you know, enjoy this and like live your best life now. They're both saying that, but one's condemning it and one is embracing the fallenness. You know what I mean? And if we don't do yeah, it Yeah, I think way, there has to be, 
I think there has to be a mixture of the two. Yeah. You know, and 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 and, and we, you know, we have to. You definitely, you're, you're you're both right that we have to, uh, and I agree with you both that we have to 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 um in a way say as a Christian we're supposed to revere God. So we're supposed to, you know, look, do our best to try to um, fight against sin, but realize that when we do sin, that we should, you know, ask for forgiveness, you know, for our sins from God and from Jesus Christ and realize that it will happen, not as an excuse, but, you know, just, you know, realize that it's kind of, it's like a person who's dieting. And they try to do everything perfect, you know, and very few people do. So what happens when they, you know, it's a birthday party and end up cheating? Well, they end up feeling bad and guilty, right? Mm -hmm. And so they end up getting off the diet more times and staying on it, you know, so that becomes a problem. And so, and to keep someone on a diet, it's usually best to realize that if you have more good days than bad days, you'll end up losing weight overall over a period of time. Mm -hmm. The more days you're sticking to the diet, the more days that you're doing right is the more days. So it's the same with, you know, the more days that you're reading your Bible, the more days that you're praying more to God, the more days that you're trying to follow the Ten Commandments, you're more likely to stick doing with all those things. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there is the soul, but there is also the flesh. And the flesh will always want to push you know, you went to making bad decisions because we are falling. So that, that it, it's, it's, it makes it very tough. Yeah. Um, so we have to, you know, a, the problem, we're, Christian, we're all going to find line because we don't want to sit there and be like, well, we're all under grace. Therefore you can go do whatever you want. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But but at the same time, you know, shame's to the point, you know, you don't want that either. So you got to kind of, kind of balance it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You you put that very succinctly, <laughs> man. That was good. <laughs> hey, you there, buddy? It, oh. It's tough. It's, oh. t- it's really tough because... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, can you, can you all hear me? It's, it's really tough, you know? It, yeah. it, 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 it's... It, I mean, what what do you what do you think about it? Uh, Come on. What 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 do you what do you think about it? Um, Turner, do you got any got anything you want to mention or anything? Yeah. uh... Did you be a pastor and everything? (laughs) What? The connection's really where, horrible where, right now. Do you, where do you look? Can Can you hear me? Oh, it dropped. Oh, it dro- okay, hold on. Hey, man, you there? Hey. Oh, can you hear me? You guys hear me? Oh, what's going yeah, on here? Me. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay. Why is this? Oh, you know what? Uh. So, um, uh hold on one second. Hey John, can you hear me? John, is um you there, buddy? Yes, uh, can you guys hear me? Sorry about that, man. Yes, Sam, can you hear me? Yeah, we had okay. a, when we okay. got we got um, dropped, it got disconnected. Yeah, I wanted to restart it because it, it was we were having some issues with the end. Um, um, is there anything that you wanted to say real quick about that? Uh, tur- Turner, real quick. Oh, I mean, I think you said it really well. I think it's a it's a it's a tight rope walk for a little bit. It's it's about grace, you know, and. Uh, and the reason that we spend time in God's word and try and invest in our spiritual lives is not to be saved, but it's out of our salvation. It's, you know, the works come because we're saved. The things that we do, they don't save us, but they do, um, they do, they are a part of, um, of what we do because we're saved. So that's what I would say, you know, um, it's a, it is a tightrope, but anyway, I think we got wrapped up in that a little bit deep, but that's okay. (laughs) The Lord, you know. (laughs) Um, what, one quick thing, uh, one quick thing, and if you guys have anything else, you know, we can, we can end up closing. It's getting late. Um, is one thing I've always found interesting. And one thing that is, is, um, and I guess it, it goes to what, you know, some Christians will accept at certain time periods and what they won't accept in certain time periods 
is Christianity, at least in America, in the early 1900s, was actually very much pro-eugenics and pro-abortion, mm. especially during the time of World War II. Not all Christians, not all, uh, but a good amount of Christianity uh, during the United States was. Um, and then later, of course, um, you know, it's definitely not that case, not the case now. And I myself, I'm definitely pro-life. I'm not saying that, but uh, or I'm saying that was a good thing. Um, but it, it's very interesting that very few Christians know about that or very few Christians ever, ever talk about that. Um, but I think that's one of the things where the church, is, the church will time to time will ebb and flow on certain things and accept certain things or reject certain things. Um, and and uh, so, I mean, what do you guys have to, 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 to say about that um, is one thing that I always had found in- interesting um, as a as as a Christian, of it being accepted as something that you know, you, all the three of us here find more morally apprehensible now, but something that was accepted of, of the time period. I was gonna say I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I was gonna when when you were saying that it it, it got me thinking. Um, there's this weird, I don't know, strain of thought or. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's part of, I think they call it like this uh, group of people. They call it like the Christian identity movement or mm-hmm. there's a lot, you know, that, that whole thing where uh, whites are the real uh, Israelites and, you know, other races are therefore inferior. And I think it, it, or you'll, or you'll see uh, the British, British, British Israelism. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it made it here in America as well. Um, but I think part of it, which is kind of interesting, or I don't know, I don't want to say interesting, give it a lot of credence, but they, uh, and Turner, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I know that there's, a, I think, a book called The Curse of Cain that kind of discussed um, yeah. that Cain, basically the idea was, because in Genesis after Cain and uh, God, you know, tells him that he's forced to, you know, go go across the world and, um you know, uh, just meander and whatever, and but no one can touch him, and he gives him this mark so that everyone would know he's different. This, this is summing up the view, basically, that Cain was the first uh, black person, and so his dark skin was the actual. Yeah, uh, I used, I used to hear them used to say ham too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was but, gonna, but yeah, yeah. So I was going to say, yeah, I probably heard that. I, I wonder if that has anything to do with it. So if they, if the church at that, that, you know. W- w- during that time period, if they had this th- thing that's evil and, uh, you know, eugenics and um, especially here in the United States with Margaret Sanger and uh, the Nazis that she worked with, um, I think it was, Lee, what was his name, Strubberd, something like that. Um, but they, you know. They well, were... it was during the time of, it was during the time of World War Two, yeah. um, and, and beforehand uh, during the 1930s. Uh, even the American First movement, um, a, a, a lot of them were were um, they rife with eugenicism. I mean, there was yeah. a lot of Christian churches at that time uh, because of that were were, were pushed were were pushing eugenics type. They they believed it, it went hand in hand with God. Yeah. Um, and and it's just, it's just insane to me. Yeah. Um, uh, that, uh, that was being pushed at that time. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's one of those things that, uh, I mean, if you go back to uh, just here in America, the uh, and I think everyone here that's pro-life and knows the history of it, you know, that Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist, and that's what she wanted to, you know, the undesirables and create abortion. And, you know, now the numbers are changing, but for, you know, the most of history, it was mostly black babies that were aborted at, you know, a much higher rate. So it, they really were getting these people, uh, this group of people that they didn't want here to essentially kill them, kill themselves off, um, you know, like eugenics by proxy almost to have them do it, you know, a, a cultural suicide. Um, so it's, I don't know. I, I can't imagine the, <laughs> I can't imagine the church being okay with that now or uh, uh, that blows my mind. Well, there's I, a couple things that come to mind with it for yeah, me too. Yeah. I think, all right, so benefit of the doubt, maybe maybe technology wise, they they were just ignorant to what abortion truly was um, at that point. From uh, what I've seen, they were not. They okay. were not. Okay, so then strike from that. what I've seen, from what I've seen, they were not. They thought it would be better 
uh, Christians as a whole, if they had, if for be, yeah, if, I mean, from what I've seen, it would just better, you know, the Christian stock. Uh, yeah. it, I mean, it surprised me. I had, I had no idea that was like that, and it wasn't like that in every Christian church, right, not at right. all. But well, it was a pretty big swap of the 1930s. Do you think that um, um, some of it might have been a theological disposition of when a person becomes a person? Like, is it like, which which sounds so much like the uh, Beto uh, back in the <laughs> debates early on here, but. Uh, you know, when does a person become a person? Maybe they, maybe they were, you know, uh, you know, I have the, my, th- my theology tells me that it, it's, you're a person before you're even conceived because it says before you, you were, before you were born, before you were known, I stitched you together in your mother's womb. Like I knew you before you were put together, basically. In other words, God had intended your life before you were ever conceived. So for me, uh, life is preconception, but uh, maybe for maybe theologically back then they, in the the forties the late forties there they were it was a different disposition coming out of seminaries and so it would lend itself or just straight up uh, the church was infiltrated with with some weird you know teaching from people you know it's that's always been a case that there's always some heresy they're trying to fight. Yeah, I don't know. It could, yeah, I mean that, that's probably my biggest guess was was just that, um, and it wasn't all Christian churches or Protestant churches by any means, mm-hmm. but it was something that was very rampant in the 1930s. I wonder if it was just uh, using the tentacles of the church, you know, the 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 elite to you know an early attempt um, of infiltration and you know population control. So I wonder if, you know, maybe they possibly they yeah. thought that what? the connection begins. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Messed up. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, def- definitely, it definitely could have been. Um, well, I definitely want to thank you guys for both coming on. I definitely want to have you all on again. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Turner Rosie. You guys still hear me? Or did I lose you again? Yeah, yeah no, 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 we're, we're here. here. Yeah. It just, I, I, um, I apologize. I think it's on our end. It's something going on with my internet. So. This boomer over here doesn't know how to use a tech. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, tell everybody where they can find you guys. Yeah, you can you can find us. So we're we're primarily just a podcast, but our podcast broadcasts also to YouTube. So you can find us on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcasting. It's All Out War Podcast. That's what it is. And we're on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook uh, as All Out War Podcast as well. All right, definitely want to thank you guys for coming on. Um, John. You guys have a great day. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you, man. We we love uh, talking with you and hanging out. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, very soon. I'll take yeah. care. God bless both you of you. Thank All you, right, man. brother. Bye. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the All Out War podcast today. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you want to know more, you can visit us on the web at alloutwar.us, or you can find us on Twitter at AllOutWarCast. Hey, thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next time.